Yeah. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I'm going to uh, make some more charcoal because I don't have that much coal, so I should. Yeah, it, it, but give him a phone and he doesn't have a clue. That's kind of a... a yeah, like uh, my, my granddad's the same. Like, um, you know, like you, you have some, you know, elderly people who can't even use a TV, you know, whereas my grandparents are fine with that. But that's kind of where they stop. Like, um any sort of smart device and they're like I have no idea what you're saying <laughs> at all um, so it's just blind spots because they're not used to it you know I, I feel like I, I want to try and avoid that as I get older like um, I don't want to be at a point where I'm like uh, I'm gonna stop keeping up with tech because I enjoy keeping up with tech so I, I'm like you know I, ca I can't really imagine, well, maybe I'll get to this point, but, you know, it's like, oh, I don't trust those new brain chips that everybody's going on about, but I, I don't see a point where I could be like, you know, like like my grandparents, where it's like the TV comes out and they're like, this is incredible and I love it and I, I'm so happy the TV exists. But then they just sort of stop and like anything that comes after the TV, they're like, I don't need to know this. You know, or not even I don't need to know this, just like, I don't, you know, this seems weird and too futuristic, I'm not going to bother. Like, that's, it, it's a weird concept to me, that, that seems to happen with virtually everybody over a certain age. An online class just started, I hope I'll catch you in a few minutes. Go to class, <laughs> that is extremely, if I could give one piece of constructive advice to past me, it would be, go to fucking classes. <laughs> like, um... Yeah, go to class right now. <laughs> enjoy the rest of the stream. Uh, you enjoy the class. As hard as that might be. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, what was I saying? There's, um, yeah, I hope I can keep up with tech. Like, it, it's not even a big deal. It's just, um, you know, it's just I've always been kind of like the techie guy who helps people out with things. So not keeping up with tech seems weird to me, you know? But I guess, like... Technology moves so much faster now than it did in, you know, the 40s and 50s when, when TV kind of became a thing for my grandparents. So I guess now it feel it must feel like to them, you know, that every every month there's a new ground groundbreaking piece of technology that comes out that, you know, I just take for granted. But they, they're probably like, can't keep up with that, you know, no point <laughs> at this point. I'm just going to ignore that that exists, and then if I get shown it at some point, I'll be like, that's amazing and basically magic. You know, like, now that now that my grandparents have seen, like, video chat, I, th I think they did it through, like, WhatsApp or something like that. Like, now that they've seen that, like, you can video chat with people, you know, across international lines, they'll probably do it a lot more, and it'll probably become more normal for them. But it's just that first time they were like what is this magic? You know, like, what are you showing me? It was cute, though. <laughs> and, you know, like, they have different skills, you know? Like, my granddad probably knows how to, like, you know, service his central heating on his own, you know? <laughs> or, like, you know, chop wood. I would be pointless at that. I am... I'm not quite the gamer stereotype, but I'm I'm not that far away. I'm not as far away from it as I would like, you know. Um, like, I'm not, I'm not particularly handy. Out of bed. Um, I'm not particularly handy or, uh, you know, good at doing anything, really, that isn't on a computer. Um... You know, I was never going to go to trade school, um, which would be a better idea than doing streaming, obviously. <laughs> you know, like, um, I I had a plumber come uh, look at my uh, my central heating, actually, bring it up, um, recently, because it was broken and needed parts needed to be replaced and stuff like that. I was looking at him, it's like, I, that, that's what my grandparents feel like when I talk about technology, when, when he was talking about stuff, like... You know, oh, the, the you know, three quarters flange is out of, is, is askew on the central heating unit. So I'm going to have to, you know, replace this part this way and stuff like that. And I was like, you could be saying n anything to me right now. Like, I have no idea if you are 
making up words on the spot to me right now, but cool, go for it. Um, like, I, I have no idea about any of that sort of thing. So in, in that respect, I am the, the sort of gamer stereotype where it's like, I know nothing about the real world. All I know is these games and these, this tech life, you know. Which I'm fine with. Like, I'm not like, you know, I'm not really in any hurry to, uh, to learn a trade, to be honest. I've, uh, the, the, the most DIY I've done around the house recently is, uh, I built, I, I changed a tap on my sink and was like, this feels interesting because <laughs> I've never done that before. Um, and then, uh, I built a small wooden ramp for my guinea pigs so they could get on the couch <laughs> without like having to be picked up. That that's that's the extent of my um my like mechanical knowledge or my um my handyman knowledge is I could wood glue some some like carpet tile onto a plank and like put a little hinge on it so that it could clip onto the couch. Oh, if I want to get really cynical, I should talk about my pets more, right? <laughs> like um. Like that'll get views. <laughs> like talk become a guinea pig stream. Um I adopted I said that as a joke, but I am gonna do it. <laughs> I I uh, I adopted two guinea pigs um during the lockdown because why not? I, I kind of I, I like guinea pigs a lot and my uh my girlfriend who I live with was like, I don't know about guinea pigs. <laughs> I don't know about rodents and uh then we went to like a like a petting zoo or whatever, and uh, a guinea pig came up to her and let her touch its nose. And then the next day she was like, "Okay, I'm on board with guinea pigs. <laughs> like, let's get some guinea pigs now." Um, so we we adopted some guinea pigs. Um, I bought like all a cage and stuff like that, and we're um, I'm being like the stereotype of like the hippie vegan with them because I'm I'm letting them like free roam like they're never actually sealed in their cage like um the last time I closed their cage and like kept them penned in was probably about 3 or 4 months ago um and we only got them recently like I said but like one basically as soon as they were house trained and realized what a litter tray was for they uh they were out and like left to kind of just roam around the house um which has only had a couple of like disastrous hiccups associated with it. Like, um, they brought down my internet for about two hours um, because they uh, they uh, partially chewed through the DSL cable that feeds into the into the modem <laughs> on my desk right now. Um, so they're no longer allowed into the office without supervision because they will just do that again probably. Although when I'm when I'm in here, they're allowed in here whenever because they're cute and they sit on a little pillow that's I'm looking at right now um they um they're cool though they're um they're Abyssinian guinea pigs which I've never seen before they're um they're like extremely fluffy and long haired like slightly long haired they're not like those bizarre looking show pigs that um have like hair that looks like you know a woman from the 70s they um they're they're just kind of like puffy <laughs> like I'll probably um I have uh, like um I'll actually somebody asked earlier if I have um an Instagram I do I haven't uploaded to it in a long time I will link that on the Twitch page um and you know try that out but what I'll probably just upload it on it is I think what's up on there now is like some portfolio of work stuff from like uh like graphic design classes and stuff like that but um what I'll probably upload there is kind of just pictures of the guinea pigs <laughs> and maybe some stream information, that kind of thing. Um, nothing particularly important, <laughs> but um, that that might be fun. So um, I'll probably resurrect that that account in a bit um, if you don't have Twitter. So I'll, I'll post that. I'll probably advertise... I, I will inevitably use Twitter more because I just... Actually, that's something, like, social media is something that I am like my grandparents about. Like, um, 
I was I was just saying like, oh, I, I would hate not to keep up with technology and stuff like that. I have no idea about any social media beyond Twitter, Reddit, and YouTube and Twitch. That's that's it. Like I don't keep up with anything from like you know, TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat or anything like that. Like I have a group chat on WhatsApp and that's as far as I go into that. Um you know, I never loaded up Google Plus, but no one no one did. That was kind of the death of Google Plus. Um yeah, like that's that's the one thing actually that I am like I don't know what these these chillins are up to, <laughs> you know. Um like TikTok I fundamentally don't understand. Um it's a little bit too young for me, I think. Which shows I'm getting a bit older. But um I don't know, I was never I, I feel okay about it because I was never really into social media. Like I, I was really late to Twitter and I mean I hate the fact that I use Reddit now, to be honest. Like Reddit's a cesspit. <laughs> like so is Twitter, but Reddit's a cesspit. Like uh Reddit's just a hive of scum, you know, like you should like if if anybody is like, oh, I've been thinking about getting into Reddit, don't get into Reddit. <laughs> like, save your sanity. Like, it's better than a couple of alternatives. Like, I'd rather be using Reddit than 4chan, but like, that's like saying, you know, you'd rather one deadly disease over another, to be honest. <laughs> like, they're pretty bad. But, um, like, I, you know, talking about Reddit, I've... I've curated Reddit to the point where it's quite nice now, at least on my phone, because I um, I culled and blocked about probably like 250 subs. Like basically for about a month or two, any time I was mindlessly sc scrolling through Reddit and I saw anything truly heinous, I would, uh, I would just like click block <laughs> on the subreddit and my life got instantly better because of it. Like, I got way less mad at, at things, like, nonsense. Um, so that was that was really good, and, and a good thing for me to do. Um, I've been trying to use Reddit less, because even without that, like... You know, we, we, like, the next step would be blocking users, and at that point, like, that's just a job. So I don't want to get into that. But Reddit is not a great time. Like, there is so... Like, Reddit... It's like 4chan, but without the barrier of entry of saying that you use 4chan. You know, like, I've come to realise this, you know. It's like 4chan without as much stigma. Because um, 4chan has probably more stigma than is earned. I hate 4 Like, I've been on 4chan like three times in my life, and it was genuinely off-putting every time. But I feel like, you know, people talk about 4chan like it's the apocalypse, you know. But, um... I feel like that's a little bit unearned, but Reddit, I think, gets too much of a pass. <laughs> like, Reddit is bad, you know? Like, um, the amount of just rampant sexism, racism, and homophobia that's on Reddit, it makes me feel bad for using it, which means I should stop using it, like, obviously. But I, I haven't, <laughs> you know? Because it's also, like, it's just entertaining enough to keep, do to keep going, you know? Which is not a great excuse like um yeah it's it's just fun enough to use reddit that i keep using reddit um even though like i said it's it's pretty awful i don't even know what i'm i i i said i was gonna start um you know try and start the same way i did last time i've kind of just resigned myself to this this village is so off-putting to look at like I really wish they would have fixed at this point the um was that a, oh that's a villager. I really I really wish at this point they would have fixed the the village generation so that it didn't do this, but I feel like every time I start and like I, I, I've done like a like village centric Minecraft runs before, years and years ago. But um I feel like I always have to like terraform the village to make it even possible to move around in the village. <laughs> Which is not a great, you know, uh, compliment to their world generation algorithm. Let's go sleep again. I should get my own bed at some point. Like, I need to clear out a lot of these trees. I love that you can shove them out of the bed. Like, that wasn't a thing before, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure you had to, like, wait perfectly until it was night before they could get there. 
Um, I should mine more stone so I can build steps. And then... Yeah, what I want is iron, because what I want is some decent iron gear. And some... What am I saying? Some decent iron gear, and then some decent iron ar armor, and a shield. Like, a sh the first things I'll be upgrading are probably sword and shield, because this is hardcore. And hardcore is a nightmare if you don't have a shield. A, a shield is probably the most useful... Um, thing that they added into the game, actually, in terms of combat, when they revamp combat, because it it almost completely nullifies like creeper damage if you if you get in their face with a shield, even if you're like unarmored, it'll it'll probably save you, which is huge because easily like I I think I mentioned in the first run that half my half my runs on hardcore mode end in a fall, like just dropping off something without really paying attention. The other half are always creepers. Like, almost universally creepers kill me in this game. Um, because I tend to play... I have it up a little... I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit more. But um, I usually have the sound off when I'm listening to podcasts or something. You know, I'm very rarely actually playing the game like this, just straight up. I usually have music or podcasts on in the background, which I can't do here because of, uh, you know, the obvious... I would get sued <laughs> kind of ramifications that that would have. Um, I've been looking for... Actually, if anybody watching this on YouTube or anyone in, in watching this on VOD or something, if they want to tweet me about... um, or leave a comment somewhere or a message, um, is there a good place for completely copyright-free, like, kind of chilled-out music that I could play on stream? Because I've seen a couple of... I've, I've sort of half looked into it. You know, there's a couple of... Um, places on Spotify that claim to be that, but I haven't really looked into them, and I would be worried about the fact that Twitch now has D DMCA takedowns like YouTube does. I would be worried that I would just instantly be mauled by lawyers. So, I don't... Well, not even lawyers. Robot lawyers. <laughs> um, so I, I don't want to take the chance. But if, if anybody knows... I think I have one. It's like a radio station, but you have to get attribution unless you pay for it, and I don't feel like paying for it right now. Um, so I, I feel like if, if anybody has a suggestion for getting some proper, you know, chilled out background music that I could play in the background of this, you know, games that don't have their own soundtrack, or like Minecraft where it kind of fades in and out. Like, Minecraft's music is very beautiful. Like, I'm actually gonna... Let me just turn that up a little bit. Um, for when it does come in. Uh, music and sound. Music. I'll turn that up to, like, 80. Because I, I do like the music in Minecraft a lot. But it's not really there all the time. And it would be incredibly annoying if it was. Like, it would get really old really quick. But I do want some music playing in the background at some point. Even if it's, like, low-key, like, ambient stuff. You know, like, if anybody knows of basically, like, a royalty-free, like, music for airports by Brian Eno... Like, that would be perfect. Just have, like, sweeping, kind of distorted orchestras in the background. Um, that would do for me. Um, I need to make a shovel. Or two. Um, yeah, since we're starting new, this is going to go slow for the first couple of, uh, for the first couple of streams, I would say. Like, you know, I did two streams of the original world, and it was going okay. Like, I had started to make progress. I had, uh... A mine just about started to be built, and uh, a house that I was like semi proud of. So it'll probably take at least that long again to uh, to get back up to speed here, especially considering I'm kind of just wandering around beautifying a village that I don't really need to be beautifying. I should be mining right now, so let's do that. Um, and then I'll build a proper house at some point as well, because this is not a proper house. But um, yeah, if anybody has suggestions for music to use, then that'd be good. Right now, um, to start off the stream, uh, I used, and that'll be on um, on VOD, you'll be able to catch the start of the stream. I um, I used some of the YouTube audio library, which seems to be pretty safe. And the um, I'm also using some Kevin McLeod, Kevin McLeod, I've never been sure how to pronounce it, stuff from Incompetech. You'll notice... Um, if you scroll down, I think that's how it works. There's a there's a slate, or like a panel, down below the video player that uh, lists the music I use from Kevin McLeod. 
Um, so that that's that's attribution. <laughs> um, and so, you know, if you uh, if you want to check out that, <laughs> that's fine. Online class got done early. That seems to be the way with online classes. I did online classes recently. Um, I was in I was in college uh, up until recently, a couple of months ago, until I graduated. Um, and for the last couple of months, uh, the it got closed down because of the virus. Like uh, we had to do with about you know just as our final kind of graded projects got handed out to us, or we got the briefs for them. Um, we were told, oh, the school is closing and everyone out. <laughs> like, uh, we can't legally be here anymore. And we were like, oh no, like that's, that's real bad because we have, um, like for me, it was okay because even with my old computer, it was, it was not great, but it was good enough to, to do kind of high definition video editing on just about like it crashed, but just about, um, it did not like After Effects and special effects work, but um, with just basic video editing, it was it was completely fine. So I was able to finish like um, I directed a short film and uh, I was able to edit it and put it together. Um, so that was good. But the um, some people were really struggling. Like I felt so bad for them because I was like, it's not your fault, obviously. Like some people like you, like somebody in chat was saying, like some people are just not good for some people just don't do well with online learning and I don't think anybody does really like there's a reason like school the school system is not particularly great but there's a reason you do it in person you know like it's uh it it does genuinely help a lot like um even with the 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 technology I was I had at my fingertips I was like I would really like at least one day in class you know like I wouldn't mind if most of the week was online but if I could have one day where I could like speak to a professor and go like hey look at this and you know they would be able to point on the like the editing timeline like what they thought would be good for me to do you know that that would be such a huge help um but no <laughs> but i had it so much better than most like um you know some people didn't like in, in, uh, in our um sorry I, i'm rambling now but like uh, in my um in my class we were working on um IMAX, you know, the a Apple IMAX, which are, I, I hate them, like, um, I hate them, but they are good enough for editing, you know, like, everybody in the class hated using them, but we could use them, you know, and you didn't have to have your own high-end editing rig to, to edit your videos, you could, uh, you could, you could use the college and it would be fine, but eventually, like, when the, uh, when the pandemic hit, some people didn't even have laptops that could run the editing software. So they had to do this, like, you know, basically they, they had to get in this group where um one person would have, like, you know, like, an, an, whatever, what are they called? Like Air Macs or Mac Airs or whatever they're called, the, the laptops. um And they would have to, like, share that around between the different people in the group um in order for everybody to get their, their projects done. And I was like, I'm so glad I'm not that... Um, and also I lived not close to anybody, so I had to, like, I, I couldn't help out either by letting people use my rig. So it was just a bad time in general. Um, yeah, online classes must really suck. Like, it, it like, it's, it's a problem, because obviously schools should be closed, you know, like, you, you know, you, I, you, if you've seen the news of Britain recently, they, they sent everybody back. They sent all schools back for one day and then realized that it had gotten so bad that they had to close them again. So everybody went back for one day and then it was back to like last minute online lessons and people were angry about it, like justifiably. Um, but like obviously they need to be closed, but it sucks so badly. <laughs> like nobody likes the online classes. We, we barely even did them in my class. Like one, two, three, four. We barely even did them because um, the teachers were like, or the, the professors were like, we, um, we have, um, y you know, you've been given your final projects and we were in second year. So I was like, you, we've, we've given you your, your final projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like a 20 minute, uh, class every two weeks or so where if something is desperately wrong, you can tell me. And if not, then just kind of get on with your own work, which 
you know, like the online classes weren't helping anyway, but still I was like, I should probably be doing a bit more. <laughs> Especially one, one professor I had who was a nightmare. Like, um, this professor, like if you're dealing with online classes, if you have projects, like, you know, if you're in secondary school, there's probably less of a concern, but like, if you have projects, like college stuff, um, that you need to hand in, or even like, yeah, like paperwork that you need to hand in, like, um, like essays and stuff like that. You submit them online and there's probably, you know, depending on where you are, like in Ireland, there's a, um, there's a, a service called Moodle, I think it's called. Yeah, it's Moodle, where it's like a state sponsored service where teachers are meant to use it to allow students to submit digital work. Right. So it's like even before the pandemic, we were using that and eventually it got to a point where one of the teachers decided not to use that like this this like well-reviewed well-liked service that everybody else was using he was like no i'm gonna build my own website that doesn't work and you're gonna have to sub uh submit your projects in there even though there's like a file size limit that means you'll have to compress them to nothing like it was just a, such a hassle we used Moodle at my previous college before the pandemic. I hated that shit so much. Yeah, like, it's always kind of... A, I preferred it to handing it in, just because, like, Moodle worked enough of the time that I was fine with it. But, like, um, sometimes it didn't. And then sometimes uh, the teachers hadn't set it up properly. And then occasionally you got, like, an older teacher who, uh, who was like, uh, you know, I'm just not going to use it. And then that meant that that was when you had to... Uh, you had to submit everything in paper. Like, um, I remember the worst it got was we had, we had to submit a final project. Um, and it was, it was something like 70 pages, like 70 A4 pages was the paperwork for this project. It was project management slash, uh, like film editing and stuff like that. We had to write this like incredibly detailed project that showed how we were like working through it. And it was about 70 pages. We had to sit there and print out 70 pages and then bind them together with like clips and a binder and hand them into this teacher. And it was like, everybody in the class was like, can't we just email this to you? <laughs> like, or do Moodle or something. Cause like, this is a nightmare and it's going to destroy the printer probably. Like, you know, each person had to, or like, I think we, we were in groups. So it was probably like, you know, uh six people had to submit this so it was like six by 70 pages you know um and it would have been worse like they had to fo because of the pandemic they had to force everybody to do online submission Our, my final project this year was um 120 pages long <laughs> it was 120 pages of paperwork that i had to submit if i had been in class they would have made me print that out and i'd be like no <laughs> i'm not gonna print that out but, um, so that was kind of, a the tiniest, tiniest silver lining of, a of the, you know, deadly global pandemic. I don't want to be too cavalier about it. Um...